Hi everyone, it's Rhonda here from the Clever Corvid Art and Art Workshops. Today we're going to do a really fun project. We're going to take an old folder and we're going to transform it into something like this or this or this or literally thousands of other art pieces. You are not going to believe how versatile this workshop is and how many different uses you're going to have for it. So I'm going to give you a supply list and you're gonna go get the stuff you need and we're gonna get started. Are you ready? Here's the supplies you're going to need for today's class. You need an old file folder or something that's stiff cardboard similar to a file folder. So an old birthday or Christmas card will even do. Anything that's that's stiff and uh, capable of being cut with scissors, but not too thick so that it's hard to cut with scissors, okay? You'll also need a few pieces of paper, just plain printing paper or from a paper pad, a pencil, a pair of scissors, a glue stick and things to color with. So I'm going to use crayons and pencil crayons or pencil crayons. And if you don't have either of those, the great part is that you can do this whole thing with just a pencil if you want. So go get those supplies and I'll meet you back here and we're going to get started. So in today's workshop, we're doing something called low relief embossing. Sounds really complicated, doesn't it? But it's actually not at all. It's a sculptural term, believe it or not, but we're going to use it in a different way. So I've pulled out an item to show you what I mean by low relief sculpture. So sometimes when an artist is creating a sculpture, they'll make a sculpture that you can completely walk around. So let's say my coffee cup is a sculpture you can see it from all points of view. But sometimes an artist doesn't want to sculpt all the way around or have you walk all the way around. Maybe they want their artwork to be attached to a wall, like a gargoyle sticking out of the wall. So that's where you start to think about low relief sculpture and high relief sculpture. So I brought this a piece of crazy pottery that I made a long time ago to give you an example of the difference between low relief and high relief. So let's imagine that there's a wall here. This is gonna be our wall. And this is the sculpture sticking out of the wall. See how it really, really sticks out of the wall? That would be called high relief because it's really close to being able to see the sculpture from all sides. Okay, low relief on the other hand, doesn't stick out from the wall very far at all. So you can see that I have these spirally designs stuck to this teapot that I made. They don't stick out very far. That makes them low relief. This part, because it does stick out quite far, it's high relief. So do you understand the difference? Low relief hardly sticks out at all high relief really sticks out a lot. That's what we're gonna do today. Do you think you can handle that? We're using paper, I think you can. So I'm gonna show you my low relief art piece that I created. Do you see that? It's all pieces of cardboard or file folder that have been glued onto this file folder surface and there's a few different layers here. So this is really low relief. If we were to use a magnifying glass and look at this from the side, you would be able to see that it is sticking out from the wall. It's like an extreme low relief sculpture, believe it or not, because it is three dimensional. It's sticking out a little bit, even though it looks pretty flat. So that's what we're going to be creating today is our own low relief sculptures, we'll call them. And then we're going to do a lot of really fun art with them. So there's different ways that you can develop ideas for the art that you're going to create. So I like to make a list of favorite things. 
So what are some of your favorite types of, let's say, music? How about sports? Colors, that's an interesting one. Hobbies. Subjects that you like in school. Food and drinks. People. Shows that you like to watch. Any other activities? Activities. I was checking to make sure I spelled that right. So those are some good starting points to start to develop different ideas. So I went ahead and I started to add information here about all of the different things that I like about music and sports and so forth. And if I want to, I can have an art piece that shows all of the different things that I love, or perhaps I can just focus in on one thing. So I'm gonna focus on gardening. What kinds of ideas do I get in my head when I start to think about gardening? So I'm putting that word right in the middle and I'm going to create a word web. So, well, I definitely grow vegetables in the garden and some are root vegetables such as carrots beets and potatoes. Then with beets, I really love to make pickled beets. Mmm, pickled beets, so good. Or borscht. Have you ever had borscht? Potatoes get made into mashed potatoes or fries, but there's other vegetables too. There's tomatoes, zucchini, I don't know if I spelled that right, but that's okay, broccoli, and so forth. For vegetables, I could keep writing and writing and writing, but there's also flowers. There's something called annual flowers, that you grow from seed and they only live for one year. There's also perennials. Um, and they come back year after year. So an example of a perennial is a hosta. An example of an annual could be a zinnia. Um, there are some plants that are actually biannual, and what that means is they oops, drop their seeds like a poppy. So they keep on coming back year after year. Same with um, violas and pansies. But there's more to gardening than that. There's the dirt. And there's worms, and there's nutrients that go into the soil. Like I put something called bone meal into the soil. And so forth. And I'm gonna just keep on writing and writing everything that I know about gardening. Wow, I have a lot of information here. I think I'm going to go through this word web and I'm just going to circle some of the, the words here that really catch my interest right off the top. So right away I love sunflowers and poppies, worms. I also love Auntie Mary's pickles. Hmm, what else in here gives me a picture in my head right away? Mason jars. 
shovels and beets and carrots. There's some words that instantly give me pictures in my mind. So put this to the side for now because now we need to talk about shape and then we're going to go back to this. So in this art piece, this background shape here is called an organic shape. These are natural shapes. The hearts are geometric shapes and the guitar is a freeform shape. I'm gonna tell you the difference between the four because you're going to try to incorporate the four different types of shapes into your artwork. So do you remember in the cartooning unit that we did, we started with geometric shapes. We know that geometric shapes are well-defined and orderly, and they're used when you're learning about math a lot, when you're learning about perimeters and so forth. So circles, squares, triangles, hearts, diamonds, ovals, anything that's very orderly is considered a geometric shape. Next, we have natural shapes. Natural shapes are ones that can be found in nature, of course. Leaves, clouds, flowers, stars, lightning bolts. What other shapes can you find in nature? Freeform shapes are unstructured and irregular shapes. So remember that guitar I drew? You can't really say, well, that's a geometric shape or a natural shape. It kind of has a lot of different angles and then curved parts to it. So that's why it's called a freeform shape. So it's unstructured and irregular. And look at this funny shape that I drew here. That's definitely a freeform shape. And finally, we have organic shapes. Organic shapes are usually quite curvy and blobby. So you can't really define it either. It's not angular like a freeform shape. So it's called organic. It looks like it can be found in nature, almost like a puddle or a blob. So these are the four types of shapes that we're going to be focusing on. We want at least one geometric shape in our art one natural shape, one freeform shape, and one organic shape. Do you think you're up for the challenge? Let's see. So I took all the words that I had circled in my word web and I wrote them onto a new piece of paper here. So you can see beets, carrots, pickles, mason jar, sunflowers, poppy, worm, and shovel. Now what I want to do is I want to try to decide which ones are geometric, which ones are natural, freeform, and organic. So beets are definitely natural. So are carrots. Pickles, well pickles are cucumbers, that's natural. A mason jar, I would consider that geometric. Sunflowers, again natural, so are poppies. Worms, I, I would say that a worm is pretty organic. They're kind of blobby looking. And a shovel is freeform for sure. So now I have natural, I have lots of natural ones because I'm doing gardening. I have one that's geometric, I have one that's organic, and I have one that's freeform. I'm gonna draw them out. There we are. I have my natural beet, my geometric mason jar, my freeform shovel, and my organic worm. Now I have to decide how I'm going to put these together into a unique art piece. So that's where my creativity is going to come in and I'm gonna come up with a couple of different ideas. So let's get started.
is my first sketch using those four ideas. I'm not really happy about it at all. Why would I have a jar of beets outside with the, the beets in, in, still in the ground and the worm and digging up the beets? I'm not really happy with that, but I need to make sure that I have a geometric shape in here. Hmm, what am I gonna do? Maybe what I need to do is go back to my word web that I wrote. Let's see, do I have anything in here that can be geometric? Geometric, geometric. This is really tough. You know what? I think that I might have to add more in here to make geometric shapes included. So I'm thinking I need to include the sun because sun and rain is used to help garden. And the sun is a circle, which is a geometric shape. And I think that could really help my design. this idea much more. I have a geometric shape. I have a freeform shape. I have a natural shape and I have an organic shape in here. I really like that. Now it's interesting to note that I had to go all the way back here and add more in so that I could meet the criteria of including all four different types of shapes. And that's okay. That's totally okay to do. That's what art is all about. Developing our ideas, going back and forth, back and forth until we get exactly what we want. If I wanted to, I could do more sketches to refine this a little bit more, but I think I'm ready to start to make my low relief embossed art piece now. So let's get ready for that. So I'm going to use this birthday card. You could use a file folder if you want to or any other thin piece of almost cardboard like paper. But I'll use this birthday card just to show you. Now this birthday card has to be able to fit on this piece of paper, okay? So just make sure whatever size you create as your base is smaller than your piece of paper. So we need a background piece of cardboard that we're going to glue everything onto. So I have that all ready to go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to redraw all of these shapes onto this extra piece of cardboard. about what I just drew. It doesn't look the same as this, does it? The reason is because this is what our final picture is going to look like, but we have to draw them as individual shapes and cut them out of this cardboard. So it doesn't matter how they're set up on the page, as long as I have all of my shapes. So I have the section where the dirt is going to be, I have my two beets, I have my sun, I have my shovel and I have my worm and now I'm going to cut them out. I have all of my pieces cut out individually. Now I'm going to glue them onto here. There, all of my pieces are glued on now and you might be looking at this going, what kind of art is this and why does it show all of the printing of the card on it? That doesn't look like a good art piece. That's okay. We're not going to even notice this when we do the final art piece. This is just getting us started. This is our low relief embossing so that we can create a lot of different art. But before I get started on that part, I think I wanna add just a little bit more detail to this. I'm gonna add a few lines on here with cardboard for the sun rays, and I might put some more flecks of dirt on here. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and then we're gonna get started on the next step. There you go, I've added some more detail. I put little flecks in here to show uh, all of the different things that can be found in the dirt underground, like nutrients. And I added some rays to this. Now I'm gonna get my paper and my crayons. I'm gonna show you the next step. Okay, here we have our print. I'm gonna put my paper right over top of it. And I'm going to hold this pretty good so that it doesn't slide anywhere. I'm going to use my crayon. And here I go. Neat, eh? So because it was a low relief art piece, I was able to run the crayon over top of it and it picked up all of the edges. So now I have kind of a base coat of color and I can go back in with a bunch of different colors and I can just start playing with this drawing now. You ready? Here we go. So now I'm going to go in and I'm just going to noodle with this a little bit. Taking a black crayon and I'm starting to add extra details. I added a spiral in my sun. Sometimes outlining makes things look really fun and pop out some more. But you don't have to. And you know what's great about this? If you end up making a mistake and you don't like how it looks, you just grab this again, put a new piece of paper on top of it, and start again. You can do this over and over and over again with different colors and different patterns and textures and ideas. That's what's really fun about this project is that the possibilities are really, really endless. I could color this a thousand times and every one would look completely different. Adding more flecks of dirt in there. Oh, there's my dog barking at something. Probably a cat or a bird or another dog going by. That's what Willow does. Ta-da! I think this one is done. Pretty neat. If you don't have pencil crayons or crayons at home, you can just use your pencil. Just use the pencil on its side and just color it really neatly. See how all of my lines go in one direction? There, I colored it all in. I might even soften those lines a little bit by just smudging it with my finger, just to get rid of some of those lines. I like it just like this, actually. But I can go in and take this out of here and I could start playing with this design with just my pencil. So look at how I just used pencil and I was able to make things stand out just by playing with line designs and texture. And I made scribbles in the soil and I made curvy organic lines that radiate out from the sun. But guess what? I can make this even more unique. I could take a pencil crayon and I could start to make certain things in the drawing pop out by adding just a little bit of color, 
or a lot of color if you want. So I can go in and add some pencil crayon here. This is called Grisaille. When you color over top of a gray pencil drawing by adding a little bit of color, it's called Grisaille. Then I could go back in with my pencil and add those detail lines back because they got covered up by the pencil crayon. So let's take a quick peek back at this original one that I created. Here's one with pencil. And see, I just did contrast and a few extra line designs on it. And it really pops out, the guitar pops out. Here's one that I did with pencil crayon. And I did a lot of scribble shading, that's called. And then I did some value shading in there to make some of the shapes pop out and really strong outlines in areas. And finally, here's the one that I did with crayon. Nice and soft, but the guitar still pops out, and so do the lightning bolts. Shazam! So what is this technique good for? There are so many different things that you could be doing with this low-relief art. So maybe you could make a card that says, Happy Birthday, or some other holiday greeting, and then you can make a unique card for every person that you send it to. You can keep this and you can make a new card for every different birthday. Isn't that neat? Maybe you'll avoid using imagery and just use block letters like your name and make a sign for your door. That would be pretty neat, especially because you could make a whole bunch of them. Or one of these could just be one letter. Ooh, that's a neat idea. You can make postcards to send to your friends or family. Or maybe you're just going to take this art piece and you're going to cut it out and you're going to put it in a frame and have it displayed in your home. Just make sure that you keep this part because this is what you can use over and over and over again. You guys should be super proud of yourself. You did a lot of work with this project. So you had to do brainstorming, you had to think about what your pictures are going to be, and then you had to look at the different types of shapes that there are and make sure that you included four different shapes in your art piece. You had to design it in a way that you liked. Then you had to cut out all of those shapes and glue it onto a base. And then you had to do the actual coloring on top to create your own unique art. So that's a lot of work and you should be really proud of yourself. I hope that you learned a lot from this and I hope you're coming up with a lot of ideas of all the different ways that you can do low relief art for yourself. So thanks for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe and we'll see you with my next workshop. Who knows what that will be. Bye for now. Think art.